Bismillah Rahman Rahim. I welcome you all to this uh, video tutorial. And this uh, I will discuss that uh, what is the uh, compliance and the non-compliance and why the compliance is important for the patients and then the different reason of the uh, non-compliance. So uh, normally I will discuss that as a physician a registered medical practitioner who has specific medicines regarding to the patient diagnosis who uh, prescribe for the patient ko. So who will have a specific type limit B who will tell you that you have uh, to, for the uh, three weeks, four weeks or even in some uh, chronic uh, condition like the TB or other diseases then uh, who medicine and chronic condition of, uh, for the for long time then the patient must use the medications. So why the uh, why these time limits are important? So actually, ham jo is ke contrast mein ham discuss karte hai steady state concentration. So actually, the steady state concentration is actually the concentration of the drugs within the uh, blood circulation. That is the maximum concentration. So actually, suppose if I draw the blood vessels, so the steady state concentration is the concentration. Uh, the drug in the blood vessel that is in the uh, maximum amount. Uh, we can also uh, use the term the CMAX, that is the maximum concentration of drug in the plasma in terms of the um, biopharmaceutics. So actually the steady state concentration, we use the medication to achieve this state. So in this state, uh, after that, the, if the drug is maximum in the drug uh, in the blood, so that drug will then uh, counteract the different types of the infectious agent that may be either the bacteria, fungi, virus, or the some uh, parasitic uh, infestation. So actually, uh, we use the medication according to the approved uh, guidelines or schemata that is uh, prescribed or recommended by the physician or the pharmacist. For what purpose? To achieve the steady state concentration of the drug in the plasma and to uh, sufficiently and properly care the disease state uh, that is caused by the infectious agent. Now let's proceed toward the uh, outline of my presentation. And so uh, in this uh, video tutorial, I will discuss the that what is the outline of the lectures that I have already given that uh, we use the medication according to the approved guideline or schemata to achieve the uh, steady state concentration. And then the definition of the compliance and the non-compliance, what should be the definition? And then the overview of the non-compliance. Suppose uh, a patient has oh, according to the uh, approved uh, guideline, oh, medicine use nicer, huh? so fair, uh, what should be the uh, consequences? So, uh, and, and this will be the overview of the non-compliance uh, worldwide, especially in the advanced country. And then the reason of the non-compliance, why? And what is the reason? Just get through Juhe medicine, Juhe, who a patient way of properly medicine use Nikara. So that may be either the <clears throat> intentional reason or the uh, unintentional reason. We will discuss this uh, in the further uh, in, continuation, in, in the continuation. And then the extent of the non compliance. So uh, in this, uh, I will discuss a lot of terms like the uh, either the patient is taking the uh, low, medic low medicines or the, uh, the patient is taking the medication in the high doses or either the patient is taking some other medication so this will be the extent of the non-compliance and then the what should be the importance of the non-compliance that what should be the consequences if the patient uh, didn't take the medication according to the approved guideline so that may cause a lot of trouble either the morbidity will increase and the mortality as well as the patient visit to the hospital or the healthcare uh, facility that will increase and then may cause further burden on the healthcare system. So this will be the different, uh, and this I will discuss a lot of terms. And then the uh, how to assess the non-compliance of the patient, suppose if the patient is due and didn't take the medication properly. So how we will assess that? So uh, although there is no specific way, but we can assess the patient through uh, either direct method or indirect method to assess uh, the non-compliance right. And then the, what should be the strategy for, influ for improving the compliance of the patients. So this is the outline of this uh, lecture. Now let's proceed toward the definitions. So actually in the definition that is given that the extent, the compliance is the extent to which a person behavior 
in terms of what? In terms of taking medication, following diets, in terms of taking medication, following diets, or executing lifestyle changes coincides with medical or health advice. So that will be the uh, compliance. So simple mean ye hai ke, uh, compliance to hai, this is the extent just me jo hai ki behavior ko hum shri karte hai ke either in terms of taking medication i owe medication lera ya nahi lera and then uh, if the patient is obese so in that term uh, either the patient is taking the proper approved uh, recommended guideline regarding the diets or not or suppose if the patient is hypertensive so uh, either wo jo hai salt ki jo restriction hai wo follow kar raha hai ya nahi kar raha isi tarah jo hai exercise kar raha hai daily ya nahi kar raha and then the uh, exec executing lifestyle changes suppose if the patient is suffering from the uh, some other mental condition so either uh, the uh, they properly engaged in the society or uh, they properly uh, do the regular exercise daily or not so at that the behavior of the patient is coincide with the medical or health advice so that is that will be the compliance so this is the definition of the compliance now now uh, it is further uh, in the elaboration of the compliance that the compliance is the process whereby the patient follow the prescribed and dispensed regime as intended by the prescriber or the dispenser mean the pharmacist so it is the quite interesting definition that the, this is the actually the process just me to have a uh, physician prescriber or the pharmacist jo ke uh, jo cheez prescribe ya dispense karta hai ye do log to aaya patient wo jo hai follow kar raha hai ya nahi kar raha so this is the uh, end definition of the compliance now the compliance is uh, compliance with therapy is an indication of a positive behavior in which the patient is uh, motivated sufficiently to adhere to the prescribed treatment or self benefit as well as uh, positive outcomes. So actually, when you compliance the process, eh, this is actually the positive behavior of the patient. Just like I have discussed here, this is actually the behavior of the person in terms of taking medication, following diet, or executing lifestyle changes. So here it is the positive behavior. Just kind of syrup, uh, Johe, who self benefit over patients go, Balki is Kajoe, Pira, uh, positive outcome may be over means, a patient do a specific disease suffer head, so that will be also uh, treated if the patient uh, follow the approved or uh, approved guideline. So, this was the definition of the compliance. Now, let's proceed toward the uh, definition of the non compliance. So, non compliance simply mean failure to act in accordance with the advice. Mean, uh, didn't you, if you, the patient didn't follow the advice of the healthcare providers, so that will be non-compliance, or the deviation from the course of therapy as the non-compliance. If, if the patient didn't take the medication according to the approved guidelines, or the uh, recommendation of the prescriber or the dispenser or pharmacist, so that will be the non-compliance. Now, the uh, as I have mentioned in the uh, uh, outline of my lectures, that uh, what should be the overview of the non compliance? So, WHO has reported that more than 50% of patients fail to demonstrate compliance all over the world that largely produce a uh, health problem as well as increase in the cost of the treatment. So, this uh, is the WHO report that most mostly. Are more than uh, fifty percent of patients to hey, they are non-compliant, or the patient non-compliant hey, to this case there a two uh, problem as it is. One to health problem as it is, because who patient who will be, and the second is the increased cost of the treatment. Just like we have ne jo hai aali discuss kiya hai in the national essential drug list or the etc. So is a jo hai fir waha par bhi problem ho gi ke ka the treatment ke jo cost hai. And then uh, in USA, non compliance cost approximately $100, $300 billion annually. This uh, major included the avoid hospitalization, the nursing home admissions, and the premature rent. Uh, USA, which is an advanced country, this uh, situation is that annually, non compliance is 100 to $300 billion. Uh, a cost of that due to the non-compliance. 
Uh, Non-compliance leaders enjoy greatly affect the pharmacist. That is the important failure of the healthcare system. As uh, you must be aware about the failure of the healthcare system, that may be the physician, the physician, pharmacist, nurse, and then the paramedical staff. So uh, it the non-compliance may affect the pharmacist as well, and increasing providing and because the pharmacist increasingly providing uh, support and counseling of the patients regarding their therapeutic regime. So the non-compliance also affect the pharmacist as well. And now let's proceed toward the, uh, so this is now, I will proceed toward the reason of the non-compliance. Suppose uh, this child uh, didn't take the specific medication. So what are the reason why they didn't take this uh, specific medication? Uh, so there must be some reason that, that this child didn't take this uh, medication. So now let's, uh, so this is the reason of the non-compliance. So that may be either the intentional reason or the uh, an intentional reason. An intentional reason, one of the reasons is the fear of side effect. Uh, here is coming up with due to some uh, a family may suppose yeah, a drug is origin of a drug uh, due to a, a medication use can say a specific side effect, a fear why so uh, and then the people are spreading this pause uh, belief system or piruski would just say a patient drug medicine use nikana. So this is one of the reasons of the uh, intentional reason of the non-compliance that the patient may be frightened of potential side effect. So this is one of the reason of the uh, intentional uh, reason of the uh, non-compliance. The second reason is the fear of dependence. Uh, so simply it means that the uh, concern about becoming dependent on the medicine. So simply mean you have a patient who is a concern that if they didn't take their specific medication so uh, they will didn't feel well. So uh, due to the fa fear of dependence, this is the another intentional reason of the non-compliance. And then the other reason is the uh, lack of symptom. So is a simple mean a patient who don't feel uh, any differently when they start or stop their medication. So a simple mean a how do discuss? Yeah, for example, this is like a chronic uh, disease, just like TB, I suppose. Uh, HIV, AIDS. So, us case me jo medicine for the prolonged time we must use the medicine. Or uh, suppose ya par jo hai patient ko jo suppose wo medicine le le raha hai initially ya usko jo hai wo medicine le raha hai uske jo symptom hai usme koi improvement nahi aa rahi. So ya wo medicine stop kar raha hai and there is no change in this and uh, in his or her symptom. So this is also one of the reason of the. Uh, non-compliance this is the lack of symptom and the other reason is the drug abuse so uh, here the patient uh, start using the drug for a sense of well-being so here the patient taking the medicine for the sense of well-being and uh, this may cause this may uh, lead toward the abuse or misuse of the drug so the general example here is the centrally acting drug suppose i can give example here the narfine it is used by the IV drug user for the uh, sense of well-being, and this is also one of the reasons of the non-compliance. And then uh, cost is one of the major factors for the non-compliance. Patient may prefer to save money because of this. They didn't take the medication, and this is the reason of the non-compliance, especially in the absence of health insurance. Then other reason is the, this is the reason number six, by the way, that uh, this is the mistrust. Uh, here, patient may have doubt about uh, prescribing motive of the prescriber due to marketing effort. So, this may simply be that the marketing a company, a pharmaceutical company, whose uh, marketing effort, which is on the basis of the patient, uh, feel that the prescriber has prescribed me this medicine, this is not my condition, but the pharmaceutical company is. Uh, because of that, they prescribed the specific medication to me. So this is also one of the reasons of the non-compliance. And these were the different uh, five, six reasons of the non-compliance. Intentional reason by that. Now, what is the unintentional reason of the non-compliance? So that may be either the nature of disease. So patients who are depressed or mental disorder, 
are less likely uh, to take the uh, medication accordingly. So this may be the, the nature of the disease. This is one of the unintentional reasons of the non-compliance. Then the poor communication between the prescriber and the healthcare, uh, between the patient and the healthcare provider. So this is also one of the reasons of the non-compliance. They do the lack of the proper uh, education and counseling. And this is one of the main reasons of the non-compliance. Uh, uh, actually, the main feather that is responsible for the proper, properly educate the patient uh, regarding their medicine is the pharmacist. Like in uh, our pharmacist, a community in India, I suppose, healthcare system may like in Pakistani uh, society. Uh, most of the time, a pharmacist available in Utah, so the patient will take in the medication by their own and they will not aware about the proper use of the medicine. So this is also one of the reasons poor communication is the unintentional reason of the non-compliance. And by the way, this is, <clears throat> this is a particular true about patient with chronic diseases like the TB or AIDS. Uh, then the other reason uh, the non-compliance is the poor labeling. This is also one of the reasons. So uh, for the labeling, So for the labeling, we must use proper label so that the patient can have So uh, label must be clear and specific. Uh, so if, the, um, if there is poor labeling, so this is also one of the reasons of the non-compliance. So example of poor label is take as required, uh, are used as directed or handwritten. And this is the main reason of the some prescriber write the, in, a, in an appropriate way and then the uh, dispenser can't even read the medication name or the dosage form, and this that caused the um, non-compliance or even the medication error. And then the other reason is the inappropriate packing. So um, here, this is especially true for the difficult to open or too small to handle for the old patient. So uh, improper packing is also one of the reasons for the non-compliance. And then the other reason is the polypharmacy. So here, the greater the number of uh, different medicine, uh, the higher the dosing frequency, and there will be higher the rate of the non compliant. As uh, the WHO has recommended some uh, schemata regarding the medicine, so if the, if the healthcare provider prescribe a lot of medication to the patient, so they will be confused regarding their uh, medication. As this uh, guy is confused regarding their medicine, as this may be, they will take either this medicine or this one on this one, or even this, this is in their mind. So uh, poor pharmacy is also uh, nowadays one of the main reason of the non-compliance. And the other reason is the social economic reason. So the another unintentional reason of the non-compliance is the age extreme. Uh, too young or too old are the interference with the work schedule. Uh, this is uh, true in case of the some uh, employee. So, and then the lack of family support. This is true in case of the uh, people living in the isolation and old aged people. So this is the uh, uh, social economic reason is also responsible for the non-compliance of the patient. And then proceed to all the uh, extent of the non-compliance. Suppose if the patient didn't take the medication according to the approved guideline. So what should be the uh, what are the extent of the non-compliance? So either the patient will take the low medication. So if the patient is taking low medication, this will uh, no or poor therapeutic response. Uh, the patient is didn't taking the medication. So the response, there will be no or the poor response. And then the other is the taking higher dose. When the patient taking a uh, higher dose than the required one, so there may be chances of the toxicity. And then the other reason is the uh, taking uh, no medicine is all, and the patient is not taking the medication. So uh, there will be the worsening of the condition and uh, there will be uh, no treatment and no uh, improvement of the patient condition. And then other reason is the taking different medicines. So uh, self, uh, this is due to the self decision based on personal or peers advice, may not be helpful or even dangerous. So if the patient is taking other medicine though, so this may be either not helpful, this will not improve the patient condition, but uh, either it will uh, further uh, uh, endanger 
filtration lines. And then the other uh, extreme is the drug abuse or addiction. Some psychological or physical dependence may lead toward the uh, unnecessary use of the drug, as I have given the example of the uh, narfine or the nalbine injection that is used by the IV drug abuser. Currently, mostly in the uh, now let's proceed toward the uh, importance of the non compliance. Suppose uh, we have in the earlier slide, we I have discussed that uh, what is the extent of the non compliance. So that may be either the patient is taking a low medicine. So there will be no response, high medicine, there will be fast toxicity. And the other reason was the uh, patient is taking other medicine. So the same uh, condition when the patient is not approved. So the, uh, and the other uh, different drug abuse and uh, misuse. So these were the different extra. Now, what is the importance of the non-compliance? So a non-compliance is a complex issue leading to huge burden on the healthcare system. There needs to be immediate attention from the patient, uh, as well as from the pharmacist and the physician. So from these three pillars, proper attention should be given to the uh, compliance of the patient because some important outcomes of the non-compliance will be increased morbidity, mean incidence of the uh, cases will increase, and then uh, the uh, increased complexity of patient condition, patient condition will further worsen and they didn't take the medication properly, or uh, at my case, the duration of the treatment, you see many in start medicals care case, steady state will not issue at the time. And then the treatment failure, this is true in sense of the, uh, of the, of the lady uh, who was pregnant and they want to, uh, to avoid the pregnancy. So and they, take, uh, they take the oral contraceptive pills and they miss one or two doses or more than two doses. So that may be the, uh, that may cause uh, the conception. So this will be the treatment of the treatment panel. And then the uh, increased cost of the treatment. I have already discussed this in contrast to the essential drug list, our national essential drug list. And then the uh, our essential use of medicine by then. Increase uh, frequency of hospital visit and stay. Uh, this is also one of the consequences of the non-compliance. Uh, and already if the visit is uh, increased, so already there will be increased burden on the healthcare system. And also the uh, increased chances of resistance. Uh, this is the main issue nowadays because the, if the patient uh, is either didn't take the medication properly or the, due to the polypharmacy, and the patient is using a lot of medication. So uh, that will either cause the resistance. And this is the main reason worldwide nowadays that uh, most of the uh, antibiotics are now uh, resistant to the, a lot of the different types of the infectious agent. So the proper attention should be given to the this issue. And then at the last, it will increase the uh, mortality or the incidence of the death. If the patient is taking too much high doses of the, suppose the barbiturates that will cause the coma and eventually the uh, respiratory uh, depression and then the death. So this was the importance of the consequences of the non-compliance. And then uh, now let's proceed toward the method of assessment of the uh, non-compliance, how we will assess the uh, non-compliance. So a uh, patient mostly provide unreliable uh, un uh, information. So beca because of what patient give unreliable information because of unable to remember or to please the prescriber. So uh, there is no single standard method through which we can assess the patient non-compliance rate, but we can use the uh, most important two methods, that is the direct and indirect methods to assess the non-compliance of the patient. Now let's proceed toward the indirect method. So here in the first method is the interrogation method. So here a simple questionnaire are used to assess the compliance level and convenience of the regime or dose or the uh, incidence of the side effect or even the uh, patient knowledge about the therapy. So, but the uh, side effect of this interrogation technique is this is the subjective and tedious method and uh, because a lot of time we can count. And then the uh, other is the pill count method. So we can use the pill count method uh, to assess the compliance rate. So compliance percentage is equal to number of pill uh, taken and then the number of pill prescribed multiplied by 100. So this pill count method, we can assess the patient compliance rate 
and then we can also use the uh, uh, MEMS method. That is the abbreviation for the medication payment monitoring system. So here a microprocessor is installed on the container to record the uh, numbering or opening of the container. So simple mean we add some uh, microprocessor or chip to the container of the medication and if the patient uh, open the medication, so that will indicate that the patient is compliant. If they didn't take the medication or didn't open the container, so that will be the non-compliance. So, but this method is uh, compliance is assessed as ratio of number of opening to number of doses prescribed. So this way we can uh, prescribe the, or uh, we can assess the patient non-compliance rate. But the side effect is that the opening of container is not necessarily demonstrate the use of drug. And the patient is very cool or purpose key the medicine uh, container to open car right. So um, that is by the way not using the medication and that is not the compliance. So this is also the, the side effect of the uh, MEMS medication we monitoring system device. So these were the indirect method for which we can assess the patient non-compliance rate. Uh, and now I will proceed toward the direct method through which we can assess the patient non-compliance rate. Like we can use the uh, direct analysis of the drug level in the body fluid. Here we can use the therapeutic drug monitoring that is the techniques mostly used for the neurotherapeutic index drugs, but we can use their techniques here as well for the assessment of the non-compliance of the patient. And then the other one is the urine marker. So uh, we mostly use the vitamin uh, B2, that is the riboflavin, to the uh, drug regime. And in the presence of that marker in the urine, demonstrate the compliance level of the uh, patients. So these were the different uh, methods through which we can assess the patient compliance and then compliance rate. Now let's proceed toward the uh, what should be the strategy. Suppose we have the discussed here, okay, uh, first of all, what is the definition and then the uh, different reason that the patient is not taking the medication and that is non compliant. And then uh, what is the consequences of the patient with medicine according to the food guideline use nature? So what should be the consequences? And then uh, what are the extent? And then how we can assess now what should be the strategy to improve the uh, compliance of the patient? So we can use different approaches. One of them is the simplification of the therapeutic regime. Here we can either minimize the complexity mean uh, le less number of drugs with uh, defined schedule here mean to avoid the fully pharmacy, and then uh, we can uh, use up sustain, sustained uh, release and long acting drugs. Uh, we can use uh, to improve the patient compliance rate by using the uh, advanced uh, technology drugs that is the mostly the recommended DNA, uh, recommended DNA technology drug uh, that is the um, uh, sustained or control release drug that follow the. Uh, uh, most of the drug followed by the way are the uh, zero order or the first order kinetics. So we can use the medication that follow the zero order kinetics drugs. So that will improve the patient compliance rate. Or we can use the single dose drugs that is was example are the phenotype that is the anti epileptic drugs and the fluoperinol non sedative beta blocker and then the antidepressant like the emetriptyline, nortriptyline, and the clomiphamine, etc. And then we can use the PEX dose combination. By the way, this PEX dose combination was also used for the uh, FDC, is also used for the treatment of the TB, uh, in which the uh, in which in which tablet, uh, four different medications are, in, are included, like the isoniazid, rapamycin, pyrazinamide, and uh, ethambutrol, and that may be used for the at least uh, two months or the six months in the intensive phase of the TB or the continuation phase. So here, uh, actually, the uh, purpose of the fake dose combination is to increase the synergism. A general example here is the co-trimoxazole. Uh, that is actually the combination of the sulfamethoxazole and trimoxazole. And then it improves the efficacy. General example is the um, contraceptive, oral contraceptive pills. That is the estrogen and progesterone combination. And then it, uh, through PEX dose combination, we can also decrease the side effect as well. Like uh, the patient is uh, suffering from the Parkinson disease. So in that case, we um, we use the levodopa, that is the dopamine precursor drug, but that can be destroyed by the uh, repral dopa decarboxylase enzyme. 
So to prevent its uh, degradation, we can use the uh, decarboxylase inhibitor like the uh, carbidopa, etc., with in combination with the levodopa. So this was one of the techniques to improve the patient compliance rate. And then the other strategy is the use of uh, suitable medication packing. As we have discussed in the reason of the non-compliance that one of the reasons was poor labeling as well as poor packing. So if we uh, uh, properly pack the medication, immunodose dose packing, especially a uh, blister to improve the self-medication like in case of the simple analgesic, etc., or the other medication, other uh, hands blister use, can I? so that can also improve the patient compliance rate. And then the uh, medication box or the uh, different drugs to be taken at specific time and interval. So this case, we have a specific medication box to use, we can use this emergency box to use. And then the third reason is the use of the supplementary labeling. So additional instruction about use uh, promote the compliance, especially the pharmacist can give um, properly educate uh, and counsel the patient regarding their medication. Like, and that will be given uh, in, in the layman language or the vernacular language. So uh, the general example of the proper labeling is the shake will before use in case of the suspension or take with plenty of water in case of the other medication. And then the last one is the improved patient counseling and education. This is the main responsibility of the pharmacist. It is the main pillar of the healthcare system. So uh, they can either uh, counsel the patient through verbally or the front end information or inpatient medication training programs and programs should be arranged for the patient to improve the compliance rate and then the compliance, uh, compliance clinic should be open at uh, specific communities to uh, aware of the patient regarding their medication. So these are all uh, regarding the, uh, the compliance. And uh, then the, uh, so these was all about the uh, non-compliance and the different aspects that we have discussed like the uh, Definition of the compliance and non-compliance overview, and then the reason of non-compliance and what are the extent, large dose, small dose, other medication, and then the importance uh, because of this non-compliance, there will be increased mortality, morbidity, uh, hospital visits, uh, burden on the healthcare system, resistance, etc. And then how to assess the non-compliance through direct or indirect method, and the strategy for improving that may be the proper labeling faking or the proper education and counseling or the uh, simplification of the therapeutic regime. So thank you all for your time and stay blessed. Thank you.